Sloth by Topher Chambers. Sloth. Now that's an interesting sin. It is considered one of the deadly sins in the Judeo-Christian faith. But is it a sin to be lazy? In a time period where everything is automated and people have lost jobs, is being lazy even something to worry about? If you don't work for a living, then you will die. So why does sloth still rank amongst the others? John wondered this as he laid back for his fifth nap this afternoon. Sin. Why make something that everyone is guilty of a sin? One can't get away from it. You do what you want, then you get called slothful when you don't do what people want you to do. You can't escape. At least that is what he told himself as he drifted off to sleep. Thinking the whole time, he had the entire world left to fulfill his aspirations. They could wait another hour. He was tired. Sleep didn't come easy to John that afternoon, but it never did, really. The reason he was always tired was he never got any real good sleep. This time wasn't any different. The darkness fell as sleep pervaded. Then the sounds came. The motions. The insane combinations that filled his darkness with twisted disturbances. It had been the same for weeks. Just like clockwork, John bolted off the couch. It was one hour to the minute since he had lain down. Of course he went along with his normal routine. Checking the house, unlocking and relocking the doors, making sure no one was around. Then he sat down and hoped that he could get some more sleep before night came. The darkness was his worst enemy. He hated the dark. It came without warning then. He could slip away and never be heard from again. He didn't want that. He feared it. Sitting in the house with all the lights on, waiting. Night was hours away, but John shivered at the thought of going through it again. Not again. Never again. Bang! John shoots up in a flash. Shaking his head to get the cobwebs out, he stumbles around the room, swinging blindly at unseen assailants, slowly realizing that it was just a dream. Another damn dream. When will this stop? It is all the same, over and over for the past few months. Hell, he hasn't had a good night's sleep in over six months. It starts the same every time. He and his wife are sitting in the park on a nice sunny day when the sky goes white. Then everything turns black and dies. Grass withers and is slowly replaced by concrete, and trees die in a matter of moments. His wife, too, burns and turns to dust in his hands. Everything turns cold, artificial, as he weeps, holding his wife's ashes. The sky becomes black, metal, death for anything that needs light to survive. As this blackness takes over the park, it seems that an artificial light blinks into existence. And with it, all manner of creatures start pouring onto the now concrete ground. People still left standing become lethargic and become mere shells of what they once were. That is when the strange mutations started to take their toll on these pitiful people. That was not the worst it could get. As the changes started to affect these people, they looked at John as lunch. Behind these things, a man towered, and black robes marked with some alien sigils, he glared red eyes at John. Pointing a finger, he shouted to attack. Moreover, these people listened to him. They turned, made to move closer, and took off in a dead run, their eyes gleaming red also, but with razor-sharp teeth protruding through lacerated gums, dripping crimson the sign of their savage fury. They closed in on John, and at the last moment he pulled out a gun and fired, just as he was being ran over by these monsters. And that is where he always wakes up, terrified beyond compare. Drenched in a cold sweat and still trembling, John shakes himself one last time, kicking the empty bourbon bottle across the room he headed into the bathroom. Guess now is as good as any to start the day, he thought. John used to be a professor of language at a nearby university. An ancient language specialist. He had been researching strange glyphs when the darkness came. He never believed that it was real until a month ago. Now he dreads the darkness, and he fears being found out. That when the darkness come, so do the visions of his mortality. Death is lurking, and everywhere he looks is another face that holds some secret of time impassable.